welcome to the show. We have such an exciting show for you today. The theme is making heirloom lace on the sewing machine. And we have the most beautiful projects and oh, the technique is so much fun. And as you know, it's so easy. Now let me share with you some of the uh, ideas that we're going to be sharing with you today. Using beautiful decorative stitches. This is a lovely piece for your home, which has the beautiful circles with all kinds of decorative stitches and the words welcome written on it. A wonderful, very tailored ladies blouse with gorgeous uh, stitches right out of your sewing machine. And you know what? There's a little piece of heirloom lace right up here, which has been made by stitching a beautiful embroidery right on netting. Therefore, lace on your sewing machine. Another beautiful piece for your home with gorgeous decorative stitches. Oh my, isn't this just wonderful? Now look, the netting part, this uh, lace part, is right up here in this corner. And then as you can travel down and see the beautiful motifs all done on the sewing machine, here is the another lace portion, another lace portion, and that's what we're going to share with you today. This beautiful collar is very heirloom, and I want you just to look at the center portion. It has a cameo lady and beautiful lace uh, uh, oval around her, all done on netting, and then some more decorative stitches, lace making on the sewing machine also. Now, I'm going over to the technique boards and share with you just exactly how easy it is for you to make heirloom lace on your sewing machine. Making heirloom lace on the sewing machine is so easy and so much fun. Here's how. Use two layers of a heavy bridal tool. That's two layers. Then stitch your embroidery design through both of those layers of bridal tool. Then since we have two layers, we can have a little bit of fun. Go to the back layer, use a beautiful decorative stitch right out of your sewing machine, embellish the back layer and do the same thing on the front layer and here's what it looks like isn't that cute it's kind of a double fan there embellish the front layer too and then of course you can cut your lace out in any shape you want to cut it I have a very special guest with me today who is going to share with you just how easy it is to make bridal lace or heirloom lace on your sewing machine. I would like to welcome Lana Bennett, who is an educational consultant for the Singer Sewing Company. Lana, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. Well, what on earth are all these wonderful things that you've brought to show us? <laughs> all right. The most exciting thing that I have is the uh, new scanner that's available that works in conjunction with the sewing machine. And this opens up a whole new area of creativity for sewers and the way this works is you can create your own designs or you can use something that is pre-drawn. I have a pre-drawn design here and you just drag the scanner head down over the design and what it does is it copies it onto a card that is in the scanner. Then this card you insert into your sewing machine. Um, if you're not going to scan, you can also use the pre-programmed design cards that are available for the embroidery machine. After you've scanned or inserted a card and chosen a design, then you put your bridal tool into the embroidery hoop. And I've used two layers, and this is a heavy tool, so you don't have to use a stabilizer. But if you would um, have something that's a little of a thicker design or a lighter weight tool, you may want to use a water-soluble stabilizer. And make sure it's water-soluble. You don't want to tear away, because sewing on bridal tools is almost like <laughs> sewing on air. So you want something very lightweight that can wash away to protect your delicate stitches. Thank you. Here are just some examples that I have. This was scanned, and it's a heart shape. And you can use different colors and different designs. It's so pretty. <laughs> and here's another example using some different colors, and that's a diamond shape. That is so delicate and pretty. Now, after you do your embroidery design, what I've done is taken the pattern and drawn lines. I've done these lines in black so that we can see them. But you probably would want to use a water-soluble marker, a wash-away type, or a fade-away type to draw your lines on there. Then you're going to place the back layer under your sewing machine. Now, Lana, I notice you're not using stabilizer. I'm not. With this open design that we're using, you don't really need the stabilizer. Wow. <laughs> so uh, with the, if you're going to use a lighter weight tool or one that's a little stretchy, you might want to use the water-soluble stabilizer. But on this one, it's just fine. <laughs> 
So I'm going to use a very open, airy stitch. That's one of my favorites, as you've seen on a couple of the samples that we have. <laughs> I like to use this stitch. And I'm just, one tip I'd like to give you is sewing on the tool. I like to start in, make my piece large enough that I can start in almost an inch from the top and from the side. Because again, it's so lightweight that you don't want the sewing machine to grab the edge of it. You want to have a little bit of stability to start sewing on. Because again, it's like sewing on air. <laughs> So we're gonna put our foot there, choose our design, and it's just a continuous design, and then start to sew. And use that line as a guide. And you can see on this heavier tool, the machine goes right through it. And you wanna continue around on the back layer, and then trim that away, and then continue around on the front layer also to create your fan effect. You know, it almost seems too easy to believe, but I really have seen some of your lovely projects, and it really does look just like lace. As you said, it's kind of like sewing on air, and it's almost amazing that you didn't have to use any stabilizer, but look at that beautiful lace that you've made. Well, Lana, thank you so much for being here today, and I'm really excited about some more projects you're going to share later on in the show, too. And next, we have a home decorating project for you. Lana has taken these beautiful lace fans and incorporated them into a really pretty quilt, kind of a small quilt, or a wall hanging. And Lana, I just love what you've done on this quilt. So I'm going to uh, ask you to tell us exactly how you did make this quilt. Okay, great. <laughs> I'll lay it over here for us. After you make your lace pieces, what you'll want to do then is get your quilt pieces ready. So I've cut the solid color fabric into about a seven and a half inch square and then batting pieces, and then a layer of muslin underneath for the backing. After that, you'll take um, some sort of a design, I've done a bow here, and just trace it onto your fabric. You can use a fabric marker or a quilt pencil, anything that's going to come out of the fabric. And you want to test that on a scrap to make sure that those tracings come out. I've done this one in black so that you can see, but what you'll want to do is do it in a monofilament thread or in a color that's the same as your top fabric. After you've stitched your bow, you'll want to take your lace design and place it onto the quilted bow fabric. And what I've done is just lined it up so that it meets the edge there and you have your decorative stitches along the edge. You'll pin it in place and then you'll go to your machine and just straight stitch it. So you want to line that up under there, choose your straight stitch on your machine, and just stitch down along the edge in a basting stitch. I think I'll make my stitch length a little bit longer, because this is just to hold it in place until we put all of our pieces together. Kind of what stitch did you use when you went around that little bow? I used a straight stitch on that too, okay, Martha. Just going right around it. You okay. just want a straight stitch around, and that was done in a free motion um, embroidery, just using a, an open foot or no foot at all if you choose no to. Yes, yeah, some yeah. people like to use no feet at all. So we'll just baste around both edges. And after that's basted on, what you'll want to do then is take all your pieces. On the quilt, there were nine pieces that were done in a diamond effect. And you'll take all nine pieces then and quilt them together. And what you'll want to do is take your side pieces. You have four corner pieces that you'll want to cut out for the uh, printed edges. And then you'll just baste three on each side and put the whole quilt together. Well, that certainly does seem easy enough to do. And I really love that little puffy bow and, and with the combination with the lace. Lana, thank you so much. Thank you. Next, we have an absolutely adorable ribbon lady craft for you. For many years, I'd been looking at antique girl ribbon pictures in the antique stores. Well, I finally bought one. And the reason I did, I thought that we would really enjoy making one of these on the television show. This is the picture which I've dismantled so you can actually see this little girl from the front and the back. She looks like a bridesmaid to me. And you know, I bet these were used as bridesmaids gifts. And my thinking is this was probably done somewhere around 1915, 1920. It's really very easy to make. Here is the one that I've made for you. 
And this one, we've used pink ribbons, a pink bridesmaid's bouquet. And if you'll come down and look at her little petticoat, that's made out of French ribbon, excuse me, French lace, and little French lace pantaloons are on this doll. Very easy to make one of these dolls. First, I trace the two designs, the top and the body of the doll, off on a beige uh, crepe paper. Then I cut them out and put them on black paper. Now, one step at a time, I'm going to make this doll's clothes and just kind of lay it down on this little doll. All right, I use wired ribbon, take the wire out of one side, pull the gathers in with the wire on the other side, and doing several tiers at a time, I lay the ribbon down and glue it down for the skirt. Now, you remember that pretty little lace petticoat? Well, I take a piece of French lace, pull the gathering thread in it and tuck it under there and glue it, and there's my little petticoat. The little pantaloons, are once again little pieces of French lace, which I'm going to put down on the pantaloons. I think this is kind of cute. The bouquet is a piece of French edging, which has been gathered into a circle, and then little uh, pre-made flowers that you can buy at a craft store are glued down. And then we have some goodies to make her little hat. Actually, the little hat is trimmed with French lace. We have a little braid purchased at the craft store also, and a few of these little teeny roses just simply glued on for her hat. And that is how easy it is to make one of these elegant antique girl dolls. We have a beautiful, beautiful bishop doll dress for you next. It is just simply elegant and it is smocked. Smocked bishop dresses have long been one of my favorites for little girls as well as little dolls. This little dress is absolutely beautiful, made of white Swiss batiste. Let me just show you the details. It has little four-step waves smocked around the shoulders and the neck of the little bishop dress, little pink bullion rosebuds with a little pearl in the middle, and come down to the bottom of the skirt. This is the fascinating technique I want to share with you. Do you see how pretty this lace is? Well, actually, it's just called zigzag and cut method. Let me share with you how easy it is to have the bottom of a skirt, whether it's a doll's dress or a child's dress or even the bottom of a petticoat or a pillowcase or whatever. That is an easy technique. First of all, I have used English netting, this wonderful piece that has roses and little triangular shapes on them. I put it on a piece of fabric. In this case, it is the Swiss Batiste. Then I zigzag, of course you don't use pink thread, I zigzag up and down following one of the lines of the design on this uh, batik, uh, excuse me, on the lace. Now, here comes the fun. I'm going to do some cutting from the bottom part, as you can see. Okay, I'll slip underneath there and just trim it away. Here we go, just slip underneath and trim the batiste away. And I'll trim the batiste away all along the bottom. And then I have one more little area to trim. It's this top area. So I will come in here, and by the way, I like to use these little scissors without a point on the end because you're less likely to cut your lace if you use those. I call these scissors kindergarten scissors. And see, I will come in here then and trim the top and you do not have to do any finishing after you trim the top and the bottom. And see there, I have that beautiful skirt simply by trimming the top lace out and then the bottom lace out. Next, I have a silk ribbon stitch for you. It's called the pleated rose. Today I am pleased to have as my guest Beverly Sheldrick of New Zealand. Beverly is the author of a book on silk ribbon embroidery called Colonial Inspirations. She's also a guest designer for So Beautiful magazine. Welcome to the show, Beverly. Thank you, Martha. It's a pleasure to be here. Ladies, today I would like to teach you how to do a folded rose. This is a very lovely rose. You can see I've used it here on this scissor case and you can see how very pretty it is. It starts with three French knots. You will see here I've got them very close together and I've already gone ahead and prepared the center here for this rose. So small, three small French knots tightly together in a little triangle. Now I'm taking my second ribbon 
and I'm today going to use a variegated ribbon. I just love the effect that we get with these variegated ribbons. I'm also taking a second needle which has threaded in it just a piece of normal machine thread and I'm going to bring this up right beside here just like that. Now I'm going to use my needle to pleat. I'm going to draw it up like that, put my needle through, bring it back again and off we go once more. So just turn the hoop round a little bit, draw it up with the needle and secure it. You've just got to watch it. it. It tends to run away with you if you're not careful, but you've just got to show it who's boss. So there we are and we're coming up. And you know, ladies, that's really all we have to do. We just keep moving this round like that, draw it up like that, and take the needle through. And so you work your way round, going round like this. It doesn't matter, as you can see, I'm using a seven millimeter ribbon here. I think it's quite a good idea to be generous with the size of the pleat you take. If you try to take too small a pleat, then the thread tends to run away with you and it becomes a little bit difficult. Just bring it round like that, draw it in like that and take it through. Now we're getting to the point now where we're almost ready to start going round a second time because I think they're rather lovely. If I was using a plain thread, then I would, at this point, I would probably take my thread through to the back and I would choose a second colour. And depending on the size of the rows that you want, then obviously you can use two or three different colours and get a lovely shaded rose. But you can see here we are. Now I'm going to just pull this section forward like that and bring my stitching up behind. In that way I can get my pleats when I do them so that they peep out underneath like that. I don't think you need to worry about having your pleats all perfect, all exactly the same, because if you think about a rose, ladies, we have many, many different types of roses, don't we? And so it helps to give them character, it gives them shape and it gives them form, if they're not all exactly the same. Beverly, you know what? I think that variegated just makes it so fascinating. Isn't it wonderful? It really is the wonderful shades mm. of peach and yellow. Beverly, thank you so much for sharing this beautiful, beautiful pleated rose. I don't think I've ever seen that stitch before. Well, that's nice to have something <laughs> new for you, Martha. Of course it is. Thank you so much, Beverly. And now then, we're going to our beautiful heirloom quilt square. There are two magnificent squares off of this beautiful heirloom quilt I would like to share with you at this time. The first one has three hearts, and actually these hearts are made with double needle pin tucks. The three hearts are each one filled with beautiful silk ribbon flowers. This is really very easy to do. The next one is right down here. This time we have four squares which go on the outside of one big square in the center which has a little shadow applique design. Do you notice that each one of those squares are filled with a little pink, little pink fabric? Really, this is all very easy to do. And if you'll come over here with me to the sewing machine, I'll share with you how you can have quilt squares like this too. First of all, I'm going to transfer my design to a, uh, the quilt square. As you can see, I've drawn off my small squares and my big squares. Next comes lace shaping. I've pinned some of the laces around here. I'm pinning in a lace shaping board, which means the pins are going to, going to go in very easily. All right, I'm going to come in. I'm going to put a pin on the outside and a pin on the inside. I'm going to fold the lace back on itself in order to make a miter. 
remove the pin on the inside that goes through two layers. And when I bring the laces around, there is a perfectly mitered corner. I'll do the same thing here and here. And now it's time to show you the magic of how it gets stitched down and also how those little pink squares get inside. Now then, first of all, I'm going to zigzag all the way around the outside of these squares. Then, in order, before I put the pink on the inside, I'm going to have to go in here and trim away the fabric from behind that square. So now you see I have a piece of square lace with a hole in it. Next, I'm going to put a piece of pink fabric behind this open hole that I've just cut out. And the next step will be to zigzag around the inside. So now my pink fabric is attached and all in the world I have to do to make it pretty like that one is to come in now and trim away the excess pink fabric. And that is how you put another color behind this color. See how pretty it is when it's all finished? I've also put my pretty little uh, rose design in there also. Now the double needle pin tucks are easy to do also. This, it, I've drawn my hearts on my quilt square and this shows you how I've done the double needle hearts on the quilt square, at least part of them. Now let me show you how you turn the corner on these double needle pin tucks. Okay, now I've got my double needle in and I'm going to stitch along until I come to the very corner of this heart and I'm going to come until I hit the very corner that I'm going to stop with my needles in needle down position. Now watch carefully. I do, I leave the needles in the machine. Oh my goodness. Is this going to work? Yes, it is. I turn it until I'm going in the new direction and the needles were left in the machine. And now then I begin to do double needle pin tucks again. And that is how you turn a corner with double needle pin tucks. You simply go in. Let me go ahead and clip this now before I finish it so I can show you that that made a beautiful turn. Can you see that beautiful turn on the double needle pin tucks? That is all there is to doing double needle pin tucks and turning around in a very beautiful turn. You simply wait until you get to the bottom, leave the needles in the machine, pick it up and veer around and know you did not get a tuck or a pucker in there and know you did not break those expensive double needles. And now then I have a magnificent christening dress to share with you if you'll come along with me to my attic. I bought this dress recently and I think it was from an estate out of Connecticut. Uh, it's the most unusual christening dress that I have ever purchased and, and just has some wonderful features I'd like to share. There are silk ribbons, the little, there's a little ruching of silk ribbon that goes around the neckline. And look at this. There is a little cross, which has simply been, I started to say zigzagged down, but it is not zigzagged. Every bit of this dress is made by hand, which has been appliqued down. Look at the little hand embroidered uh, satin stitches, the little round circles. I just love that little cross. Now let me show you the sleeve. It has another one of these beautiful little crosses. And actually there's another cross on the other sleeve. And do you see the little silk ribbon bow up here? It's a little worn out. Actually, this dress is not in the best condition, but I just loved it and wanted to share it with you. The little silk ribbon ruching around the bottom and then some French lace that goes around the bottom. Now then, the, the work on the skirt is also every inch done by hand. And let me just share with you what it is. This almost looks like applique on netting. The dress, by the way, is done on netting. The pieces of fabric are made leaves and flowers and more leaves. And then these little eyelets are handmade right below it. But it honestly looks like applique all over the front of this dress. This beautiful netting has just got the most gorgeous embroidery you've ever seen. And then down on the bottom is some more embroidered pieces, some little loops that are absolutely elegant. I just wish that I could embroider like this, but it would probably take me 300 years in order to make a dress like that. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. I've had such a wonderful time and I hope you have too. And I'd certainly like to invite you to be with us the next time.